On this week's breaking news, we have a ton of rumors from City to mini scale Marvel to 20th anniversary, Star Wars, so much more. Also, stop by a red telephone box on your way out. That's your that and much more on this week's breaking news. Today's episode is brought to you by Back to Brickware, my newest venture into the AFL merchandise, the ultimate Lego inspired clothing line that's not just fashionable, but also celebrates the very foundation of the Lego system we all know and love. Imagine minimalist designs that seamlessly blend style and nostalgia. Back to Brickware brings you high quality apparel inspired by the iconic Lego bricks we know and love. Each piece is crafted with precision and attention to detail, making it a must have for any Lego enthusiast. These aren't just your average threads. We're talking about minimalist designs that don't scream at you, but just show your nerddom in a classy way. And of course, they're inspired by designs found in the Lego system. And you know what screams quality? Embroidery. Almost every piece is stitched with love, featuring those iconic Lego elements. It's like wearing your childhood memories, but making them fashionable. So whether you're a hardcore a fool or just want to rock some seriously cool gear, check out the Back to Brick Wear page on Etsy. Etsy. Dive into the collection, embrace the Lego spirit, and let's make some memories together. Back to Brickware, where the style meets nostalgia. Head over to the Back to Brick Etsy page and let the fashion adventure begin. Happy building, my friends. Lego. 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 Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Back to Brick. I'm your host, Garrett, and this is the podcast where we talk with fellow Aples about their Lego designs, and we get down to the breaking news every week to talk about all things Lego has been up to for the past week. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. As always, if you're not subscribed, please do so so you can follow up on all the episodes that we have coming up because it's not only the breaking news. We also talk to a lot of designers. It's just the frequency of finding time for the interviews does come up. Definitely trying to do that more and get in touch with some of these designers. You can also support us over at our Patreon, become a Lego stud where you can support the podcast early and with no ads in it. And then it's also going to be put on YouTube because there's not only videos, but it'll stream the RSS feed. So you can just listen over on YouTube as well. Some great options to definitely enjoy being a part of and learning what's happening in the Lego news and in the community for a little bit of the admin my wife has got a new job so we are not in crisis mode of not having either of us have jobs and we're going to be taking some time off before she starts her new job and I'm still looking for a job you know still doing as much as I can with this and trying to grow because the Instagram is growing insanely well I'm putting a lot of my shorts on YouTube now so you can check those out as I continue to try to uh, well put more and more content in my face out there because I want you guys to know who I am and see the the process and understand my dedication towards, well, this and Lego. And so that the podcast has always been there and it's coming up on what well, we're entering into our fourth year here in April. So that's kind of crazy. It's one of the longest things I've ever done. And it's it's exciting and definitely trying to get out there and change it up a little bit to make things, uh, well, adjust for the times, I guess you could say. But that's pretty much the admin today. We will be doing a set review. Today's set is going to be set 31149 Creator 3-in-1 Flowers in a Watering Can. Since it is coming up on well, it's not spring, it's still winter here, but we're coming up on the Valentine's Day time frame, so might as well talk about that a little bit. Let's get right into the breaking news. Let's kick off with the city rumors. So there's not only the standard rumors that we're going to get a racing section and a construction area, but they're looking to bring back the jungle theme as well as a harbor theme. Now, they've done jungle before. They did a airdrop ship. They've done uh, like a water area rescue style. So it's not a huge gap to see this as a brand new thing. And harbor, they've done, of course, a lot too with container ships. And so we're not really sure exactly what we're going to see, but like there's definitely going to be some island areas and um, some deep forest and jungle for the harbor. We might see full ships as well as container ships. And building off of a city like that, I mean, you're expanding into different areas. So, I mean, you're going to have to have different habitat sections, not only because Lego City is just the city style. People need to venture out into the Arctic that they've done or the jungle. And I mean, that's a lot of space. If you have the room to do that, awesome. If you don't, well, that's not it's not a bad thing. It's just that <laughs> you either adjust to that area or throw it in the middle of your city. It's, it is like a central park. Now, Lego has officially revealed their latest idea set. I believe this is Lego Ideas set 55. This is 21347, the Red London, excuse me, Red London Telephone Box. Now, this box uh, is $114 at, excuse me, 
Wow, $115 at 1,460 pieces, and it'll be released on February 1st. It's um, It coincides with the 100th anniversary of the K2 telephone box which is what they've built it on. And the box itself not only has the standard red telephone box that you'd think you'd see in London, apparently they have it all over um, the UK as well, but it's just where most of us are well known for that. There's a fence line in the back of it, um, a little potted plant next to it, and a light pole with some hanging flower baskets. The inside, you can open it up, but you can press on the top and it lights up the section. You can see the different, um, change the phone booth and different things on the inside. And well, it's nice uh, for me. I just don't know if it would be something I like to display something like this is uh, I love the red telephone box. You always take a picture when you're in London. It's just a touristy thing. So it's a it's going to be really big for the masses of people who like this stuff. But there's so many other sets that are coming up or are already out that one hundred and fifteen dollars towards this seems to be taking away from those things. I mean, I want the Polaroid and that's already eighty dollars which is expensive and we talked about that before so this is another whole uh, whole thing but honestly it's a it is a nice set just not a set that i expected to become a lego idea set because they could have just done this on their own and i guess it just saved them time to somebody else already designed it which does sometimes happen with the lego idea sets there's a great newspaper article that this young girl decided to write about lego her name is ruth wiseman and she lives in colorado springs and for the uh, Courier, Pikes Peak Courier newspaper, she decided to write and talk about how Lego really taught her about government, which you wouldn't think that those were related. But in her eyes, it talks about how her and her siblings, you know, had to divide up Lego bricks and how people could play. She's like, I, I divided them up into three equal piles and over 900 pieces trying to do that. But that's not what they wanted. They wanted specific pieces. They wanted this one. They wanted that one. So you start the sharing and bartering. And then she she said it turned into more of a monarchy because then her mom and dad stepped into it. And they were the ones that would hand out specific bricks or who could play at what time. And as you know, you continue to build and understand it, it and as you go and get educated on government, you start to see, oh, okay, this is exactly what it is. So having those different sections of uh understanding of ownership and sharing and social like socialized or communist or monarchy it all blends into the understanding of how lego has worked in the same way of sharing and you know building and having other people's designs used for something else that i mean as i keep rambling on about it it does sound a little complicated but in general using lego bricks has always been an educational tool she's decided to use it in a way that most people haven't I would say thought of in a governance way it is talking about ownership and using those Lego bricks to kind of uh, give a greater picture of how you can apply them in in a home or in different areas of sharing resources so I thought that was really cool it's a great article I'm gonna post the link in the description so you can check that out because it's a it's a fun little read to see her perspective on governance and also tie into Lego the first Insiders Double Points are up for this year. It's going to be from January 20th through the 24th. So you can go over to uh, your LEGO uh, Reward Center, see if there's anything that you might want to purchase with some of the points you already have, and also purchase those LEGO sets that are, have come out for January and get those double points. These don't happen all that often anymore, and so this is the first of 2024. Not likely, of course, to be the last. We'll probably see some coming up in mid spring now it usually i think they're spaced out every three to four months at this point so get to your lego store or lego.com if you want to buy some sets and get those double points as we know there's some cool rewards coming into the reward center such as the ninjago um, mini city and expecting more of course so there are a group of educators that have come together as an ambassador network for the Lego education program. Now the education program, as a lot of us might know, is catered towards school systems and educating kids on play as well as creativity. So these ambassador network, or as they call it, a cohort, has joined up for 2024 to continue in that process, talking about, um, you know, educating and providing these different programs for kids in different grade ranges. So teachers have said about 98% of K through eight students uh, purposely play helps them to learn and a majority 96% 
uh, of the teachers believe it's a more effective and traditional method like uh, more effective than traditional method like lectures or textbooks. So in, as they continue to move, the education uh, ambassador program is growing, including more and more teachers, more and more, more school, as well as more and more students for this. Uh, the community is fostering uh, definitely different areas of um, hands-on learning and enjoyment of not only the standard building experience, but specifically towards STEM. So there's spe uh, STEM specialist, specialist rob robotics instructors and media specialists. Creating those stop motions is very educational as well. And they say, as a Lego education ambassador, I've been able to open doors of opportunities to my students and coworkers in their diverse communities. Said Ambassador Angela Gear, it's a fifth grade math and science teacher in Dallas, Texas. I'm excited to continue the enhancing my teacher practices and sharing with my students in a way that experiences endless possibilities and opportunities for creativity and innovation and learning the Lego education. There's 78 uh, educators and over 25 states that have participated in this and they continue to grow and grow. And STEM has been such a big part of the push for students to engage. Well, excuse me, not just STEM, STEAM, because they've added the arts in the past couple of years. So I love it. The education program is really cool. The sets are always really engaging. And I believe the expansion is always the best way for uh, kids to continue to enjoy that creative side um, past their childhood. Legoland Florida has, of course, gone through a lot of expansions, and especially as they're celebrating their 10-year anniversary. And they're talking about their latest expansion, which is the Ferrari Experience. Now, in Legoland Billund, they just opened it uh, about four months ago, and I got to see just like the preview of it. But the Legoland Florida talks about the different experience where there's a build and race experience, as well as a full-size vehicle of a Ferrari you can go see. And that's the 296 GTS Hybrid. And they, they come out and say, when this new attraction debuts, guests will be able to see the Lego Ferrari up close and even sit in the driver's seat. And the build experience is, is a way for kids to build the Ferrari they want and have these cool driving experience through it. Now, Lego Land has always done their like car experience, which is where I learned to drive because there's stoplights and turn signals and all that. I wish they did that for adults still, or you had a little section that kids uh, and adults could ride together. So as they expand also to the Sea Aquarium in Florida, Legoland Florida has become a attraction that a lot of people should go and see. It's not just about Lego. It's the interaction and that creative side, especially um, Ferrari being a world-renowned um, supercar creator. So these experiences are just a more and more ways for engagement. Lego Star Wars for 2024 is getting some interesting Lego sets because, well, they're shaking it up. They do so many different Millennium Falcons and land speeders and all this different stuff. And there's a lot of different properties that are have come out recently and expanding into some other creative areas. So I'll list a couple of the ones that we expect for the summer. One is the La uh, the Battle of Peridia. So that's from Ahsoka. That will be really interesting to see how they make it playable. Uh, Jedi Bob Starfighter. Now, Jedi Bob is a huge uh, Lego lore where there's a specific Jedi and uh, one or two of the sets from mm, early 2000s that there is no name. He is just a yellow-faced um, Jedi with a lightsaber, so he's become Jedi Bob. So I'm interested to see how they'll make his Starfighter. Hopefully it's not just a standard Jedi Starfighter, but some interesting aspects to it. Now this one I'm really excited about is Dark Millennium Falcon, where they're saying that there's going to be uh, Dark Ray and a white uh, Darth Vader. So just flip it like a black and white to white and black. So that's $170. Not sure what that'll look like because it's so different. Maybe they'll make it more of an imperial style. Honestly, that's really cool. I'm very excited to see that. There's going to be an X Wing versus a TIE Fighter, which you can actually change some of the parts around so you can be creative having the TIE Fighter parts on the X Wing and vice versa. There's the Escape from the Sarlacc Pit. So that's very much kind of a prequel to what we expect for the Ultimate Collect series of the Sand Barge. Um, which is Jabba the Hutt's main uh, ship over the sand dunes of Tatooine. 
And then this one's really cool, buildable C-3PO. We've gotten a lot of the R2-D2s, but this will be the first time they've done a C-3PO. Now, I'm wondering if they're going to do like the standard gold or chrome gold. Very unlikely it'll be chrome. The parts are insane to, to build that. They did a chrome for one of the Ultimate Collectors way back in the day, and those parts go for like 40 bucks just for that. And it was a cheap set. It was 100 bucks, I think, or 50 bucks, which never you'll never see that in the Ultimate Collector Series. Now, it doesn't say this is an Ultimate Collector Series, but it's about 150 bucks. So there's definitely some aspects to it that hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll be better than what they just did with Chewbacca. So that's what we have look, to look forward to for Star Wars. That Honestly, it's going to be a fun summer, I think, for that. And definitely getting a TIE Interceptor as the Ultimate Collector Series. And a lot of those MIDI scale ships that I talked about a couple weeks ago. I think MIDI scale is great for people that can't afford the Ultimate Collector series and saves a lot of space. So there's going to be some interesting new additions for animals in the city series. They've done a couple before the, uh, I think they did a giraffe. They've done elephants. They've done monkeys. But this one, we're looking at four different ones. One specifically is going to be like a red panda. So that'll be a nice change to it. A tiger, which who knows, it could be a Bengal tiger. It could be Siberian tiger. Not 100%. It is the jungle theme. So likely to be that. Uh, they're talking about a orangutan. Um, not excuse me, not an orangutan, a uh, gorilla, baby gorilla uh, as well. And these sets are not super expensive, but those pieces probably will up the cost a little bit because they're newer molds. But Lego always does molds, which means they'll do it again in some other set. Uh, so that's fun. I really like the creative uh, aspect to continue to upgrade not only minifigures in different colors, but having different animals as well, because collection of animals is really, uh, really a fun hobby as well, because, well, there's hobbies always inside other hobbies. Disney rumors are also going to be a big thing because, well, it, it's continuing to expand. And they've done some kind of leaks recently. One specifically, we're going to get a Snow White's and the Seven Dwarfs Cottage. So it's going to be a, a build with the cottage in it. We'll probably see Maleficent the Dragon fight. Another one, because Inside Out 2 is coming out, we might get the control room. So that could be fun having these different characters. Maybe we'll get some cool colors and builds that are uniquely molded to that as they did with the minifigures for Despicable Me. And Inside Out 2, the set is expected to be $35, and it's called the Cubes of Emotion, vice versa. So maybe we'll get the balls as well that have the core memories and the twists of different colors to it. I think that's creative. Pixar always has some interesting ways of molding Lego in a different direction, such as they did with Toy Story, and uh, we'll continue in the expansion. Now, there's so many uh, rumors that I'm going to kind of bunch them all together because it's really hard to split all of them up, but just stay with me. I think you'll enjoy the ones that we're going to talk about. Continuing with Despicable Me 4, it's likely to be Gru's house, which is the full black house, similar to what we've seen them do in the Up house, so that'll be fun getting a Gru character as well. Star Wars, as I talked about before, but there's going to be some interesting minifigures on top of what we just talked about with the Dark Falcon. Likely to get Ahsoka in her white outfit, Ezra Bridger, Thrawn, Enoch, which is the commander of Thrawn's army, Morgan Elsbeth, maybe with her witch face and thing with the black lines. But also, I like Cal Kestis and young Leia as part of the 25th anniversary. Those are part of the, they had the Obi-Wan series, uh, or Kenobi series, I think it was. And Cal Kestis is from Jedi Fallen Order video games. So that's, I like that. They already have his little bot that comes with it. We're going to get Captain Cody, of course. Just to run down some other ones, Ninjago, we're going to get about seven to eight different sets. Uh, motorbike, uh, or Zane's motorbike, Cole's titanium dragon mech. And these sets get bigger and bigger. One that I'm very interested in, and this goes into the Marvel side of things, is they're going to do an 18 plus midi scale helicarrier. They did a helicarrier like, mm, I don't know what they call them now, collector series a few years ago. And I have it. It's literally in just bags in a container over here. And I haven't built it because it's pretty big as well. So that is MIDI scales great, as I already talked about. It's going to save a lot of space, something I'm definitely going to need to get. It's only about 60, 60 bucks, which is one of the lower of the MIDI scale. Surta's Battle, which is from Thor Ragnarok, and maybe we'll uh, get him with Thor and the different creatures as well because uh, they had the dragon. But it's only about to be 25 bucks. A big one is going to be uh, the Iron Man, or excuse me, the final battle 
in Ultron, which they did the statue in the end where they're all going against the Ultron bots. Love that. That Hopefully that will be really cool, not just playable, but a really cool scale and having the um, rotating uh, activation button for his ultimate taking down of Sokovia. A potted Groot, as they've done, you know, they did the Brickheads now, but it's going to be a larger scale as they've done Groot already in the... Uh, kid size scale this will be an addition to that and i'm sorry for everyone that's watching the video i got a um, hair in my eye for some reason one that'll be also really cool is guardians of the galaxy 10th anniversary ship of the milano so they did the other one which i always is it the bowie no not the bowie the one previous to that and i've heard that the build was great it does a great job of putting in the detail almost like a mini collector series style and this one might be the same at 170 dollars we're going to get a bunch of minifigures for the x mansion um so look forward to some of those for the 1990s or the 97 x-men tv show now we're going to move into harry potter harry potter is doing a large scale of the great hall at 220 dollars so there might be some really cool interactive pieces to it or you can mold it from the years on Honestly, that, that's kind of cool because it takes a, a section of Harry Potter and the series that has always been a big part of each movie instead of just uh, the full-size castle and then the mini-size castle that they did recently. There's going to be a Durham Strang sh ship and the Bo Batten Academy carriage at $140, putting them together so you can create that Goblet of Fire scene. And then there's just some buildable characters also. One is going to be Buckbeak, so like they've done with creatures in Marvel, and they did with uh, Hedwig. This one's going to be um, Buckbeak, and there's going to be a potions class as well as the buildable Mandrake, Forbidden Forest, and then Ollivander's and Madame Malkin's shop to add on to the other shops that they've done in um, Diagon Alley. Minecraft is going to see a bunch of different sets as well. The Windmill Adventure, Pirate Ship, Blossoming Gardens, City, as we've already talked about before. Lego Creative uh, Summer is a T-Rex, uh, Modern Beach House and Sea Creatures. And then we're also supposed to get about three new sets for the Sonic series because they had the playable side with the rolling piece. So hopefully they do a little bit different to this, but it's likely to see that similar style where Tails Adventure, the Master Emerald versus, and Knuckles, and then Supersonic versus Egg Drillster, which is, uh, I always think of the game, Sonic Adventures 2 and collecting those little creatures and uh, upgrading them. That was kind of my thing. So those a lot of rumors already coming out for probably spring and summer of this year. So if you're expecting to save money, good luck, because there are so many that I've talked about in addition from the past couple weeks, and there are some that we have just not heard of yet. So have fun with your wallet for 2024, as every year LEGO just comes out with more and more, and the set count keeps going up, 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 and up for sales, and probably new pieces to go into these different molds. Another thing to add to the Minecraft series, it looks like we're not only going to get the standard play size, but we can get some 18 plus sets, which means we're going to get some creatures that are going to be uh, a larger build. As I talked about the pirate ship, but, but there's also going to be the dragon. A good example, I think, would be, and it's, a lot of people have called out the piranha plant, is a Super Mario 18 plus set. And it's not that expensive, but it has some nice details to it that would cater more to the adult audience. So I think that we'll see those uh, coming up in other lines, like the Minecraft line. The Lunar New Year set has been revealed since the Year of the Dragon. We're getting a small dragon. And these only come out for, I think, during the Lunar New Year time frame. So it's about uh, a month. It's a where it's got the little date and you can give it to someone. It's 214 pieces. And since the Lunar New Year falls on February 10th, we're likely to see it at the end of January through February to get that set. And a lot of people collect those as well. And they do sell for a good bit if you've ever decided to do a resale marketing for these. The eyes are two by two bricks that are pretty big and uh, it's cool. I mean, it's just a small set you get as a gift with purchase. You'll have to spend uh, 85 US dollars to get that as a gift with purchase. The Bricklink Designer Program Series 1, as I said, is in pre starting in pre-orders in about two to three weeks. But Series 4 has now opened up for submissions. You can, op you can put in your submission all the way up until January 26th. 
I'm still working on mine and hopefully I'll get it done. But you have to make the design using the palette of palette four in Bricklink Digital Designer. Then you can, of course, you need to make renders, have a story to go with it. But I, as I remember when I did series one, you have to build instructions too. So it takes a lot of time. So if you're still finishing up or you already have something ready, make sure you have those things ready to go, following the guidelines as well. I don't remember exactly when they'll show it off for because they go through a review process, then they're offered to fans to do reviews. Once I have that up, I'll put a link in the description so you can go check it out and give it the best vote possible, which will give it the chance to be one of the finalists. I'm really uh, I really like it. And having the instructions will be cool if for some reason it's not selected probably put it in the next series if that's not happening then uh, i'll put the instructions up and for everyone that's on patreon we'll get those for free so identifying collectible minifigures has been something of a challenge for a lot of people and some of the best ways that i've seen recently is some people have come up with apps that can identify based on barcodes or different areas to search where you can might you might find them. One thing that is for the collectible minifigures that could be helpful is they have barcode or QR codes on the bottom. Now there are two types. One that is very small that you wouldn't see as a standard QR code and then the larger ones that are a standard QR code. Small ones can't really figure out. But the big ones, there's apps on your phone that you can scan that with a standard QR camera and it'll tell you exactly what's in it makes life very simple but the problem is good luck finding the ones with the big qr codes i've only found the small ones so that doesn't really help another thing is having a stethoscope with a camera on it now you can buy these for about 20 25 bucks on amazon that they have a, ca- a stethoscope like tiny rod where they use it for like going in your ear to see how like cleaning all that stuff but then it connects to your phone and so if you put it just in like one of the corner slots of the thing, you can look in and see what kind of pieces there are and maybe you'll get the one that you want. If not, some stores actually have an exchange program. You open, uh, you buy one, you open it in the store. If it's not one that you like, but there is one in the row that they have on the counter, you can switch it out. So that's fun. I did that recently where I, I which one did I get? Red herring, which it's nice, but then there was the train guy, and I, I really like that because I'm a big train fan, so that was fun to to have an add to the collection there. So it looks like we might get our wish finally for the Mario series to get their own collectible minifigure series. Collectible minifigure series 25 is rumored to be all figures from Mario. So we're talking Mario, Luigi, Toad, Yoshi all these really cool characters to become an actual minifigure scale, which could open potential to have a lot of the sets also come in minifigure. Here's the thing, it's just a rumor. I don't know if it's gonna happen. So who knows if we're gonna get that because, all right, it's not, not minifigure series five, uh, 25, either 26 or 27, because in 25 we have the mushroom head um, little guy and that could also be a part of uh, one of the Bricklink series ones that they uh, have designed but this could be something like we could finally get that not sure if it's going to happen but why not you know hope for it it as a rumor as I said cautionary tale not not likely but there's still a percentage that it's possible there's still a couple gifts with purchase that you can get. By the end of the month, we're going to see the retro food truck disappear. So that's going to be something that you might want to get to add to your history museum. Didn't come out at the same time, so I think that they just didn't have the production lined up. But you have to spend $190 or more to get that. But there are two Friends series where you can get the um, Flower Garden and then the Beach Cleanup. They're small poly bag style sets. They came available on the 14th and you can get them through the end of January. Um, you have to spend, um, what is it, like 100 bucks for both of them. Um, don't quote me on that. I, there's not much information on it specifically, but if you go in the store, it'll tell you. Since they're small, I expect that it's going to be a lower cost for each of them to get to that point. But... If you like friends and you want to uh, add these to the collection, the the flower one is just a couple flowers, but the beach cleanup does have a, a character or a friends figure to go with it. So the Bricklink Designer Program Series also has another contest. So they have done what's called the mini Lego Bricklink Design Program models. So up until January 31st, what you can do is you can design in using one of the palettes, either one through four, to create a mini build of the series one finalists. Now it has to have a certain dimension of less than eight by eight by eight 
Well, actually, you only have to use two dimensions. So you can go really high if it's 8x8 eight eight or so on and so forth. Um, and it has to be between 10 and 300 pieces. And it has to, as I said, represent the finalists. So you've got the food van, the Western General Store, the train station, the Parisian or Parisian Street, and then the castle. And once you submit it, you have to add a specific hashtag. But the rules are all over on BrickLink. I'll post that in the description so you can go check that out and have those and take some time to build it. If you do win, you get one of the Lego uh, Brickling Designer Program sets, which will save you a lot of money because they're not cheap. So that's fun. Great way to interact along with having people interested in doing the pre-orders here in the next couple weeks. So Fortnite players have been playing for quite some time the new section of Lego. And Here's the thing, though. Apparently, I mean, there's always a lot of complaints. It's something new. So it's hard to decide on, like, the collaboration with LEGO and how they're going to adapt it and do the best they can for all the players. And the real big problem is that apparently LEGO has killed the item shop. And that's where you can buy skins and different tool, different items for your character in Fortnite. And it seems that when LEGO did the deal with Fortnite, because LEGO is the latest thing, the item shop is only filled with LEGO skins. So if you don't want to play the LEGO version, you can't really update to the other skins because they show like the skin and then they show the LEGO version of it. So people are a little upset about it. And the item shop has always been a really big problem for Fortnite. So... I don't know if this is an exclusive thing or if it'll it'll be updated soon, but hopefully the Fortnite people continue to play. If they're not playing the Lego version, hopefully that'll get updated so that they can have other skins as well. Lego has unveiled a new service. It's called Lego Replay, and it's only in the UK for the time being, but I think it's a trial run because they've done this in other things where they've tested out different colors where you can get the Fiat 500 for not only the yellow, but in the blue, light blue as well only in Europe and that was sucks that sucked because then maybe I wanted it and you had to order it and ship it from there from somebody else anyways this one is called Lego replay where Lego is taking back Lego bricks in the UK there's studies that Lego bricks that they no longer need about 94% of the families who've decided to pass them on do so to friends families charities and local schools or they sell them um themselves to help ensure lego bricks are played again and again this uh, endeavor for this pilot program uh, will test new use of the brick donation by families and friends in the uk during the exp- uh, exploratory uh, phase they return used bricks will be recycled into new items that support learning in schools such as storage bins for toys so as they continue to do this pilot program uh, lego bricks will continue to pass on to to people that well might want to play with it. The education systems that we talked about before is continuing to ramp up and make these kids want to play and have fun uh, doing that. And uh, honestly, I'll see it. It's a 50-50 shot if it will be successful. Because as you know, the market is so high for people to resell them and have them uh, passed down as they've talked about before. So wait and see. And that's all your breaking news. Thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast. As always, the next couple weeks are going to be interesting so uh, we're planning to go on a vacation um our honeymoon for quite some time and it's been seven years since we're married so it's going to be dynamic different time zones so just look out for some changes i'll keep you updated uh, maybe do a quick podcast episode just to kind of outline what's going to be happening as well as follow up on our Instagram as I continue to do that as well. Now we're going to move into our Lego set review. So today's set review is going to be 31149 flowering in water cans creator three in one set. It's an eight plus set 420 pieces at 195 insiders points. It does have reviews of five stars for 12 people and comes at a cost of $30. So piece count wise, it's about nine cents per piece. That's uh, pretty average for the creator series. And having the three different designs gives you the opportunity to build, destroy, build, destroy, and rebuild. And then, of course, you can expand and do your own things. So as it's based on the watering can, we'll start with that discussion first. Watering can is yellow, uh, pretty simple uh, style of the watering can, but out comes the three flowers as well as three butterflies, and they all have very unique different colors to them, and it's a nice little display that you can put on your windowsill or on your counter um, just to have that uh, fun way of interaction towards the spring um, time frame. 
Second one is a uh, yellow boot with flowers in it. And we actually have this little small boot with a one fake flower on our own windowsill. And the boot looks really nice. They, it's very simple, of course, because the piece limit, but they, uh, they did a great job adapting from the watering can. And the third is two uh, parakeets with a flower so that um, uh, they're okay. They do look like parakeets. For this set being at this cost for the, uh, the Creator 3 one, they've done a great job this year with those. I highly recommend you get this. If you want something to represent the spring season, having those flowers and really just... Um, supporting the fun creative way of building three different sets that's your lego set review of the week thank you so much for tuning into the podcast as always please re- leave a review if you can subscribe patreon all of that to to help support the podcast the uh, affiliate link for this is in the description so if you want to purchase that and help the podcast that would be greatly appreciated as well as well as getting the back to brick gear back to brick wear which is the different designs that i've done for that get creative Get out there and go build something.